It is summer at Quail Ridge Reserve on Lake Berryessa in beautiful Napa County, California. Most flowers have now passed into seed forms and the perennial species are dormant. For thousands of years, the Patwin or Wintun Indians gathered the corms of these flowers by digging them up after locating the dead stalks. The Patwin women, like Native American women throughout the North American West, literally cultured and maintained vast flower beds of native plants as part of their food gathering techniques. Subsistence was comparatively easy for California's native peoples. Before contact with Europeans, California Indians spoke up to 83 different dialects and languages. This linguistic diversity was more intense here than anywhere else in North America. Food was abundant amongst relatively peaceful neighbors. There were neither guns nor horses. There were no buffalo here, but the large tule elk and the wily pronghorned antelope were abundant. Both were bagged only occasionally after great effort on the part of the hunter. There was trading of shells for beads and ornaments from the coast, for skins and dried salmon from the Sacramento Valley area. Many of these trading trails developed into horse and wagon trails, and they're now modern roads and highways. The Patwin's boundary extended over several ecological distinct habitats, and this required different food gathering methods. The riverine, the valley, and the foothill. Quail Ridge Reserve is located within the foothill type. The coast range on the western side of the Sacramento Valley where the reserve is located and the Sierra foothills on the eastern side of the valley have very similar ecology. So both are classified as foothill type. Puta Creek was a source of fish that were caught in large weirs or nets along the creek shores. Sometimes individuals would spear fish as the fish swam near the river banks. Another tool used by the Patwin to gather food and to control their environment somewhat was fire. Larger fires were set to clear areas of thick brush and undergrowth in order to facilitate hunting and to draw game to new green shoots. Smaller fires were used to kill grasshoppers and other edible insects roasted to perfection on the spot. Small fires were also used to stimulate fresh and even growth of grasses used in basket making. The women would control the shape and flexibility of the grass, leading to the crafting of more durable and beautiful baskets. Fire also stimulated better growth of grasses, such as Elemus glaucus, the blue wild rye, which were beaten into baskets by the women and later roasted, yielding a grain product for their families. California native perennial grasses once covered 25 million acres of California, nearly one quarter of the state. Grass seed was abundant everywhere. Some native perennials, Melica, Nacella, went dormant during the summer, giving the true original golden hills of California, while other species such as Festuca californica remained green all summer, even in the absence of rainfall. Along the permanent waterways and even where water flowed only during winter, Quercus labata, or valley oak, was found in abundance. It is one of the largest oak species in the world. Up any grade or hill where the water table and ground moisture dropped off, Quercus douglasii, or the blue oak, took over as the dominant oak species, mostly on the hot south-facing slopes. Valley oak and blue oak are both very dependent on native perennial grasses for their germination and subsequent early growth, especially during their first and second dry, hot summers, because their downward growing oak roots receive moisture from the perennial grass root mass. This root mass may go as deep as 6 to 15 feet. Young oak trees rely on their moisture until their own roots are able to extend even more deeply to reach permanent water. There is also a complex relationship between the microrhizomes of the grass roots and those of the oaks.
Interior live oak, Quercus wislazinii, is found on both north and south facing slopes of the coast range and Quail Ridge Reserve. John Muir described the species as a great green globular sphere. On the reserve, it is hybridized with the coast live oak, Quercus agrifolia, and intermediates are sometimes seen. The Kellogg's black oak, Quercus kellogai, is found on the north facing slopes of Quail Ridge Reserve where there is more relative ground moisture. The forest here is a deciduous one, interspersed with foothill pine, Pinus sabiniana, unlike the south-facing slopes, which is oak savanna. If one wanted to find a place with the most native species still surviving today, it would be the north-facing slopes. The ground moisture here is such that the more drought-tolerant Mediterranean invading plants do not take hold. This is what a Patwin child playing or a woman gathering or a hunter tracking game would have seen thousands of years ago. Occasionally a wanderer will come across a hybrid oak resulting from the cross between Kellogg's black oak and interior live oak. This hybrid is called oracle oak, Quercus morhus, a viable hybrid species which can also cross back to either parental stock resulting in intermediates that more resemble one parent or the other. Bees and other pollinators, as they move among different oak species, are responsible for such crosses. Another smaller oak found on the reserve is scrub oak. This looks superficially similar to interior live oak, but the underside of the scrub oak leaf is matte, while that on the interior live oak is shiny. Even though this is a smaller species of oak, its acorns are numerous and relatively large. Another interesting and occasional hybrid species found on the reserve is Townsend's oak, Quercus townsendi. The leaves are truly an intermediate between the two parents, valley oak, Quercus lobata, and blue oak, Quercus douglasii. This will be a good year for acorns. Not all years are. The Patween had favorite and less favorite species of oak acorn for making their acorn mush. The acorns were gathered and stored in cribs safe from hungry rodents. Eaten in conjunction with fish, acorns yielded a reasonably balanced diet. There were years when the acorn crop could be scarce or non-existent. A backup food supply was found in the understory tree known as the California buckeye. During the summer, its metabolism decreases, its leaves turn brown and drop off. Only the large nut continues to grow. The tree is estivating, a sort of summer hibernation caused by increased heat and lack of moisture. The Patween were able to utilize the nuts as food in years when acorns were not produced or were not very plentiful. The buckeye was not highly esteemed by the Patween, but they were glad to have it when acorns were scarce. Many other plants were found along the trails the Indians walked. The beautiful manzanita with its lovely red bark, the elderberry, the long flowing streams, the toyon with its lovely winter berries, the soap plant used for so many ways of the Indian life, the lovely pale iris on hillsides, the sticky monkey flower with its lovely orange flowers, and the goldback fern found in the more remote dark pathways of the forest.